What's up guys, it's Track, and we've got another very exciting Adventure Force offering. So uh, this is another Adventure Force offering clearly coming to us from Primetime or Dark Zone. Uh, the last one that we did like this was the Nexus Pro, which was a huge, huge game changer. This one is very, very exciting. It's the same companies collaborating, which means that it's an affordably priced, hopefully high performance, full of features product. So the uh, Adventure Force Spectrum has been heralded by other uh, such tactical nerfers as the Strife Killer. Is that correct? I don't know. We're here to wait and find out. So uh, on the front, we've got some interesting information. So the Spectrum comes with 15 pieces. This uh, nomenclature towards advertising pieces has never made sense to me, especially since you count darts as pieces, which to me is uh, just kind of silly. However, if other brands are going to do it, it makes sense that you have to compete on that metric on the shelf because that's what some parents care about is just big numbers. Uh, I'm here to give you like actual facts and some very relevant numbers in the forms of FPS to find out if this is actually worth your purchasing power. So you've got a motorized clip-fed blaster uh, and then foreign languages explaining the same thing. Flip it over. You see that the included magazine is 10 rounds. The adjustable tactical grip is both removable and somewhat modular in terms of its angle. We've got a muzzle brake that looks pretty handsome but is not removable, a removable scope, uh, but tactical rail up top to go with it. And what appears to be a very tactical stock, uh, it looks like this stock is gonna be somewhat modular. Uh, and it even says modular tactical blaster, multiple configurations. I think that that could be coding for cross compatibility and we'll play with that and see what it takes. The uh, overall grip looks solid. You've got the traditional Z uh, trigger for the, uh, the dart zone as well as a rev trigger. Uh, all of that, assuming that it's smooth and comfortable should be pretty cool. Last relevant piece of data is blasts up to 80 feet. That means that it realistically should be getting some solid uh, FPS out the gate. To achieve that, let's go ahead and liberate it and its included waffle darts down here from its uh, cardboard prison and see what we're working with. All right, so uh, freed from its package, we have some quick looky loos to do here. So the Spectrum itself is actually an ergonomic uh, impressor. It's doing very, very well here. Uh, litany of different accessories. Unfortunately, this is kind of cramped. I've complained about stuff like this in the past where the built-in stock at its shortest point is uh, pretty short indeed. Now the good news is that there's a switch here. You can remove it entirely, at which point this becomes a very handsome pistol and uh, very comfortable in that right. Uh, other dart zone blasters and adventure force blasters uh, are compatible with this nub as well as I think with uh, this four different points of articulation on the stock here. You've got fully collapsed, then let's set it to tall boy mode and uh, in tall boy mode, it's still a little tight for me, but uh, this one obviously aimed at a somewhat younger audience. Uh, it doesn't have to be an amazing fit, and obviously we can 3D print a new stock for it at some point, but honestly, it's not, it's not terrible. It's a little cramped. We're not quite chicken winged. We're not quite as far out as we want to be, but uh, removing it entirely is nice. The one thing that I do want to mention is this can come off in its entirety. You could put something else on this buffer tube. However, uh, you're definitely not putting standard M4 uh, hardware on there. That's, I mean, they can't all be gyms, right? Cross compatibility seems to be reserved for pro products and this is not being marketed as such. So removing the stock in its entirety, just kind of stripping this guy down to bare bones. Up top, we have a pretty decent rail and a pretty basic uh, scope up here. Uh, if anything, the blaster itself is kind of SMG-esque a la Strife and putting what appears to be a large uh, rifleman's scope on there. Uh, is a little comical, but all in all, it's a nice addition, especially if you like these accessories. I would like to see something like a pseudo red dot on a product like this, but again, you can 3D print whatever you'd like uh, for your Adventure Force Spectrum. At some point, I'll probably do a, uh, an adaptation of my favorite single iron sight, uh, coffin sight thing uh, for the Spectrum. And then this is particularly interesting. The foregrip, you might want to spin around to take a better look at, but uh, it has two different points of articulation and two switches for that. It's got forward and and that's kind of the out of the way version. And then it has a deployed version where you push this one button and it drops down because of how gravity works. I don't think that there's a spring in here and there certainly is not, but you push that button, it drops down. It's not bad. Uh, if you like VFGs, it's a little cheap uh, in some ways and torquing on it in any sort of form or fashion kind of messes with the uh, catch mechanism there. But that second button there lets you remove this and you have a <laughs> 45 degree not, no, it's not 45 degree. You have an angled foregrippy 
area that you could put just about anything on. And I think that there will be some cool offerings for that as well into the future. So strip down, this is what your Spectrum looks like. And I think that the Spectrum has a handsome magazine release down here. The trigger pull feels a little less smooth than say the Strife Isomer, but these days you can't get a Strife for $25, and that's the price point that this is coming in at. You can see the flywheels through these vents, which means that they also should stay pretty, pretty cool. Uh, the blaster is not symmetrical because of that flywheel uh, motor cover, so to speak. Uh, and you're getting paint on both sides, but it's not paint, it's just plastic inserts showcasing the Spectrum logo and then the Adventure Force logo down there as well. I kind of wish that the muzzle was removable because I think that without the muzzle on it, this would be a very handsome, low profile pistol. With the muzzle, it looks a little silly, stripped down to its most naked uh, form. However, uh, mag release, ooh, is a clean drop. No flaring in the mag well, but it actually feels good. It's pretty sturdy and it uh, flips out nice and easy if you can reach that, uh, that almost claw shaped sort of a mag release there. It's a little further than it would be on certain other blasters, but it does feel good. You have one jam door on the side here that opens up to let you get at that flywheel, which does have a little flywheel cover on the inside to keep dirt and grime out. I am really already looking forward to doing a modification guide on this guy, but we're missing one more critical player. On this side, you can see that there is a battery tray. That battery tray is gonna hold six double A's in it, which if you're familiar with how stacking uh, batteries in series works, uh, the voltage is gonna go up compared to the usual uh, six volts that you would get from four double A's. Six double A's is going to give you nine volts, which uh, for those of you keeping track at home is... Full power! This video not sponsored by Duracell. So of note, uh, these batteries set us back about $13 for a 16 pack, which if you do some very rough mental math and kind of guesstimate with taxes added on, means that the batteries that go into this blaster cost us roughly five bones, which bumps the total cost of running this product in its stock form up to around 30 United States dollars. That is a valuable metric to measure by. However, all electronic blasters these days do not come with batteries included. So depending upon if they're C, D, or AA, AAA batteries, you need to kind of wrap that cost into your product factoring. So I think it's safe to say that the Spectrum is realistically about 30 United States dollars. However, uh, at a retail of 25 and perhaps using some rechargeables that you have around, uh, you could lower that cost, uh, especially if you plan on just lipoing this bad boy up anyway, which is what we will be doing in the modification guide, which will come as soon as this video hits 2,000 thumaroonies. Come on, notification squad. I really wanna crack this guy open. Don't let this video flop. All right, so all that's left to do is slap in the magazine takes a second or so to rev up full speed and this could be a pretty nice little strife killer let's throw it over the chronograph and see what's what but before we do that spin test not bad not bad at all spectrum all right guys so in an attempt to test with as many darts as possible i wanted to point out that the uh the 10 round magazine that comes with the spectrum versus the 12 round magazine that comes with the nexus pro not only have the same geometry but like are actually the same size uh, which means uh, you could fit 12 rounds in your 10 round magazine if you were so inclined. Why they chose to change the numbers up is probably some sort of packaging thing or a value prop. I don't know, I'm just telling you that if you can fit 12 rounds in your Pro Mag, you can fit 12 rounds in your 10 rounder uh, because they're not uh, different lengths in terms of their followers. So we'll lead. This summer I actually uh, switched guys, I switched to rechargeable nine volts because for a long time there, we were chewing through these nine volts to get you guys the uh, the chronograph ballistic data and pretty happy with that decision, mostly because it means we don't have to run out and buy nine volts whenever this happens. Seems like it always fails uh, right before a video. Um, so let's go ahead and take our 10 rounder as that fires up, throw that in there. I do wanna mention something that I've noticed in playing with this a little while. The included foregrip, not the best, and you can't remove the foregrip while you have a magazine in because there's a stop here and the magazine creates a stop. So for the purposes of the remainder of this video, since this doesn't really hold any weight, 
behind it. And that's like not just me whacking it. That's legitimately, if you're doing this and braced and do anything this way, catch spring just isn't that strong in there. So I would remove this. If you really love that foregrip, it is nice that it's made into the blaster, but I would buff up that catch uh, surface just a little bit. Let's go ahead and throw some waffle tips downrange. See how they go over the chronograph. Is that real? Is that act? Okay. Uh, hopefully it's an outlier. <laughs> it's just, it's just become funny at this point, guys. It's just funny. Um, that's 30 FPS greater than your uh, elite standard performance. It's literally a triple digit shot from a stock flywheel blaster. 102, 101. 98, 100, 102. Ranges of up to 80 feet. It seems like they might be ranges of a little bit higher. I went ahead and grabbed a couple of Pro Darts. These are Pro Darts from the Nexus Pro, which is also an Adventure Force Dart Zone collaboration. Let's just see what they do out of the flywheels. So true to form, the, uh, the Pro Darts definitely are designed for springers. It seems like they're shooting just a wee bit softer uh, over the chronograph with mostly mid-90s uh, there. But this is a flywheel blaster off the shelf that breaks triple digits. What a brave new world we live in, hobbyists. Um, so I also just want to kind of like... I love these shorts so much. I don't get paid literally anything to talk about these, but uh, I, I love my Katanica shorts. And I finally got a pair in Cryptek Typhon and they hold uh, six rounders very handily, very easily. So let's put a couple down range. This is a Do Re Mi magazine. It's actually got a lot of elite darts in it right now, but uh, let's just see how those do uh, through the flywheel system. And then let's fire some real darts down because those guys were early birded and I legitimately think that's predominantly the fault of uh, being elite darts, truth be told. So we're gonna throw some pro darts down range. I don't have any waffle tips, but I bet they're gonna perform pretty handily. Uh, first, a couple flat ones. And they're so straight by comparison. It's just wild, it's just wild how much better the entry level products from Dart Zone are than anything else on the shelf these days. It is surreal. If you had told me 10 years ago that the best Nerf blasters would not be made by Hasbro, I never would have believed it. But uh, here we are. Uh, let's fire a couple angled ones. And it's every bit of 90 foot shots uh, with a slight angle. And I feel like if I was using waffle tips, we'd be breaking triple digit ranges as well. Uh, this is probably the strife killer. I think that there are things about its ergo that could use a little bit of tweaking. I think that there are things about like this muzzle that could use a little bit of tweaking, but it's nothing that we can't solve in a mod guide, guys. So hopefully I will see you guys in a modification guide for this blaster very, very soon. Keep your eyes peeled on Next Level Nerf because with the current backlog we have of orders, you're gonna wanna get on the ground floor of whatever we come up with. I wanna shorten it up a little bit. I wanna add some accessories that I think would be very handsome uh, for it as well. And then of course, uh, all of the, the kits and components are gonna come uh, from my little sister over at foamblastshop.com. But overall, uh, I was skeptical because the Strife has such a smooth trigger pull. And this is... It's just a little bit crunchier, uh, but the rev trigger is nice and, and wide. It feels good. Um, part of that's probably just that it's uh, running with hotter batteries, uh, but it might be better motors. It's definitely not doing anything ridiculous in flywheel world, so I think it's just, just better, better performance. Better darts. It's probably the strife killer. 30 FPS is a lot, and it comes in at less money these days. I still remember when you could get a strife for, you know, seven or eight bucks, but this is a... This is an amazing offering in the flywheel space. For those of you who have been questioning on some of my Walmart live streams recently, uh, when Dart Zone's gonna get into flywheels, I think that the evidence here is that not only have they already done it, but they clearly know what they're doing with it. This is pretty exciting. So uh, this one's a huge drag thumbs up. Check out the Spectrum, particularly if you like the Strife platform. I think that this is gonna be a little different, uh, a little exciting in that route. Um, and again, throw me a like on this video. A kind comment goes a long way to making this content as quickly and as early as I can. And uh, we'll try and get a 
modification guide out to you guys as soon as I possibly can. Uh, much love, Blast On Drac out.